afternoon. Catherine Cat Marr is being honored today by being selected as a member of the Chase Collegiate Hall of Fame. I would like to take you back to the year 1997, the year Cat entered our school community. I heard stories that she had a tremendous love for the game of basketball. I remember having a conversation with Kat and her dad about her interest in basketball and about being a possible member of Miss Deming's middle school team. She smiled, and her dad smiled, and I proceeded to welcome her to our basketball program. However, I did not realize at that moment that this young lady would not only one day become a member of the varsity basketball program, but also be one of the best players I have coached in my 40 plus years of roaming the sidelines of a game I came to love because of players such as Cat. Cat entered her freshman year ready both academically and interscholastically. She challenged herself in the classroom, on the court, and unknown to her, on the trails and hills. Cat had an incredible success in a sport she loved, basketball. Each year, Cat toned her skills, knowledge of the game, her court maturity, patience, and faith in herself and teammates. She continued to develop the three E's of sports, energy, effort, and enthusiasm. Cat also loved the rides in the bus with Coach Bear and the, and the team, and our stops at Ryan's Deli. Cat had in four exceptional years. She finished with 1,881 points, a school and city record that still stands today, and ranked in the top three in assists and steals. She finished with a 78 and 21 record, helped lead the team to three New England Class D runner-ups and one New England championships in her four years, and several league and tournament championships. I was watching Cat run outside one day. It was her junior year. I stopped her and said, hey, Cat, what about running cross country this year? It will certainly improve your physical and cardio strength, which I said to everybody, right? <laughs> well, that year she placed first in every regular season meet. Cat placed seventh in the Class C Canterbury Invitational, third at the Waterbury Invitational, and first in both the SISAC and HBAL. And she proceeded in her first year of running to win the Class C Championship, New England's, a first in school history. She and my five other Harriers placed third in New England's. Quick story, because I know Joe is the time. Of. Quick story, because I can go on and on. We were down at Hopbrook, and we're, we're St. Marcus McDermott. And Noggy was there, big Noggy with Raskowski. Right? And they, they, we had five or six girls, right, Kat? And they said, oh my God, you don't have that many girls. I said, no, that's all right. That's all right, we'll be all right. Let's, let's just run. So the women came over and I said, well, it's tough for you, huh? Only have five or six. I said, no, we'll just run. Right. Well, the race went off. And we proceeded to place one, two, three. There's no longer any more talk. It was over. <laughs> and if you know Razzie, tell him I said. In the middle of the season, however, Cat, unfortunately, uh, tore her meniscus her senior year. And was I worried about her not running? A lot. Was I ready? Hope, hopefully she'd come back and do... Be ready for basketball? Yes. <coughs> and she was. Great work ethic. Kat went on to play basketball at Trinity College, finishing with 871 points, which ranked her 18th overall. And she made 112 three-pointers, which was the fourth best in Trinity's history. Her love of the game is still strong as she competes in numerous basketball leagues in the Boston area. Kat developed another love, cross country. And since 2010, she has competed in 11 marathons. Six of those races include a Boston Marathon, 20 half marathons, 10 10Ks, and countless 5Ks and 7Ks. 
the 2018 Cat ran, ran her first New York Marathon, and in April of this year, the Boston Marathon. And I think, and if I didn't say it right, I'm sorry, it was one of her personal bests in, was it one of your personal bests? In your mileage time? 8.11. It's pretty good, right? For 26.2 miles, it's pretty outstanding. Cat is married to Mike Kershaw, and they have two beautiful children, Wesley two and a half and Ruby one. Kat is the assistant director of admissions at Noble and Reno, where she coaches middle school cross country and basketball. The Marr family, love them. <laughs> Kershaw family, love them. And they continue to remain great friends, and I appreciate and love them endlessly. Kat Marr. whether they want to talk or not, so feel free. I, I just, I have no speech at all prepared. I just wanted to say that um, Mr. Bear was already a coaching legend by the time I got here, and it was just an honor to be able to play for him in basketball especially, but also I'm just so glad he convinced me uh, to run cross country too. And we were, we were fierce competitors um, when I was in high school. We, we wanted to win and do well, and yes, this is, I think it was even smaller when I was here, a very small school, but, um, you know, we had some tough battles with um, schools like Cheshire Academy, like St. Luke's. Um, the years that we lost the Class D Championship were to St. Andrews, all with just high, very talented, high-level players. Um, but more than the winning, as Mr. Bear always said when we were in high school, um, we'll remember the time that we spent with our teammates and with our coaches. And that's truly what I remember. I remember bus rides. I remember practices way more than games. Um, and it just, I just feel so honored to be here today and, um, and it's so nice of the school to do this. And I wanna give a special shout out to my dad as well who literally never missed one athletic event of mine um, and was my number one fan. <laughs> today is his brother Dan Carroll, class of 1997. First of all, before I begin, uh, I would like to congratulate all the honorees today, um, but a special shout out to Carol Gunn uh, for, for this. Um, two years ago, um, she had actually started the Chase Collegiate Hall of Fame uh, as part of her plan, and uh, this is a great day for, for the school. It's like old home week. It's great to reconnect. So, Carol, thank you for doing this. God always laughs at those who makes plans. That is an expression my father uses, and that clearly is the story of the Carroll family. This expression sums up our story in many ways in different walks of life. So let's talk about the original plan for John Carroll as an eighth grader at Pleasant Sacrament Grammar School. For those that don't know, shockingly, the Carroll family was a big Holy Cross family at that point in time. Our cousin Mike Gary went on to play with Vinnie Baker at U-Hart, played on Timmy McDonald's 88 team that was hands down the best team that had played in the city with the exception of John's team in 2016. Our other older cousin, Bob Lasbury, played for Eddie Jetta Rally in 1991 and played for a great Holy Cross baseball team that was number one in the state in 1991. So the natural progression was that John was gonna to go to Holy Cross and follow suit, B2. He was gonna to go to Holy Cross, get an education, play for Eddie Generale and Coach Harris and Coach Chauve, and that was the plan. Then there was a night in the old Blessed Sacrament gym 
that changed John's fate, and mine too, during the winter of 1988 and 1989. A man by the name of Ray Bear showed up to the basketball game in December of 1988. He was the athletic director at St. Margaret's McTernan. By the way, God, it's great to say that name, isn't it? <laughs> Coach Bear was there to see kids play, but it was against the now closed Sacred Heart Grammar School. Sacred Heart Grammar School was stacked that year. There was Mike Sanders, legend of basketball in Waterbury. Harold Miller was on the bench as a young sixth grader. And oh, by the way, there was a talented kid by the name of Jim Miglarisi who held his own and played a great game that night. Once again, God laughs at those who make plans. John visited McTernan. My mom and dad were sold. John was excited. The education here was second to none. And to all the hard work of Coach Bear, Miss Deming, Mitch, Mr. Colligan, and all the athletes and the coaches that had come before, McTernan Athletics had such a solid framework and was ready to take off for a long run of athletic success. John attended McTernan from 1989 to 1993. John's pretty humble and doesn't like to tell you his stats, but if you steal his wallet or have any of his online information or passwords, 1577 is the code. <laughs> no problem. For those that don't know, those were his total career points and hoops. And let me tell you, that 1577 was earned. A lot of people don't remember that. The best player that played in the city of Waterbury in 1991 was a kid by the name of George White from Worcester School. George went on to play for Coach Beheim in Syracuse for a little bit. I would have to say, though, that the HVAL from 89 to 99 was tough. Some of the better teams that played in Waterbury were from this era, and unbeknownst to the public, were from the HVAL. New York Military Academy, South Kent, Millbrook, Foreman, those teams from that era would actually do pretty well in the NBL, if you ask me. By the way, this has absolutely nothing to do with John's induction, but I wanted to give a shout out to Ryan Murphy. He's one of the best golfers to ever play here, and he's incredibly supportive of the Carroll family, so I figured I'd give him some love, so love you, Murphy. <laughs> John had a great baseball career here as well, under the tutelage of the best coach John or I ever had, Coach Bear. John set the record for the most RBIs in a season during his time, and Unfortunately, Rick Gessick's not here. Let me tell you about Rick Gessick. Rick Gessick was an outstanding athlete here at Chase. It will eventually be inducted into this Hall of Fame because of his spunk and athletic accomplishments. However, if Ricky Gessick didn't play 18 holes of golf the day before he pitched in the New England semifinals in 1991, they went around the table in that tournament. And Coach Bear, I, I know you agree with that. John hit 410 his junior year and went on to have a great senior season as well. What's interesting in talking to John about what I was going to say today, he also wanted me to mention that he actually went on and won a cross country race as well during his career here at Chase. All right. But part of my job as younger brother is to keep you humble. John, that's great info and, and I love you, but no one really cares about your cross country career. Here. That's not what got you here. I'm just, I'm just saying. <coughs> John went on to play baseball and basketball at Tufts. John was originally recruited to play baseball, but the hoops bug caught him. Tufts men's basketball coach Bob Sheldon and John connected. But as I've got to know Bobby Sheldon up at Tufts, his college coach cannot be any more like Peter Constance, his coach here at McTurney. John and I were actually fortunate to have Peter living down the road from us growing up. As a matter of fact, the three of us all swore at the TV together when the Celtics drafted John Barry and Darren Morningstar in 1992, one of the most dreaded Celtics drafts in the history. Bottom line is, though, Peter taught us a ton of basketball. He taught us about life, too. And he also taught Jimmy Miggs, Andrew Senich, Mark Belinsky, Jay Lucarelli, Timmy Trainer, John Thibodeau, Trey Billings, Larry Botel, Kadeen Kings, and Sean Gigax a lot about life and hoops. These alums were all from the first 21 boys basketball team in school history during the 1992-1993 season. John had a nice athletic career at Tufts. I think everybody knows here that athletic careers end, but for those that still have the fire, you coach. The most fulfilling professional and coaching experience I ever had 
was coaching with John when we took over the boys' basketball program at the Heart during the 2005-2006 season. John and I took over a program that was previously 3-17 and in disarray and was seeking to make a comeback considering the program's history in the city of Waterbury. John was a math teacher and I was a school counselor that year. But during the third period that school year, we had 45 minutes for practice and game prep every day. This was a great back and forth between us because philosophically, John and I are so different basketball-wise. John's coach in college and Peter Constance were so laid back. My college coach, John Quattrochi, who played for Doc Sauer, who was one of the winningest basketball coaches in NCAA history, was very structured and methodical. Interestingly enough, Coach Sheldon or Coach Q did not protrude any of these conversations with John and I discuss kids, practice, or game strategy. Clearly, the philosophies of Ray Bear and Peter Constance were there, as well as our background, education, and philosophies that we received here at Chase. What Chase had given us academically and athletically were the framework of those conversations, which influenced the students we coached and how we taught students, and ultimately has been a large framework of John's coaching success at Sacred Heart. John has won five state championships at Sacred Heart. As a matter of fact, and Murph can appreciate this, the running joke on the golf course is that when John gets breaks, and you get a lot of them, is that particularly when the ball hits a tree and, and like lands right in the center of the green, is that clearly John Carroll has not had a lot of luck in his athletic endeavors. <laughs> Rings and championships are nice, but the proudest accomplishment that John has, particularly in this city, is that John and his staff have sent 20 players to Division I, II, or three programs, along with the many players and lives that he's touched. Contrary to popular belief, John Carroll is not knocking on doors for players. Better yet, this is a story of a kid from Waterbury who got a great education from McTernan, had the support of his parents, Betty and Mike, and due to the love and support of his friends and his family, all here today, in addition to his character, Eighth graders want to go to school at Sacred Heart and play for John Carroll. Let's not get it twisted. Well, John has accomplished much, John's induction today is not about stats, championships, and his impact here at Chase. It's about family. It's about all of you here today. His teammates, his coaches, his family, his friends here at McTurn. Most importantly, we celebrate all of our honorees today due to the personal and academic foundation that this school provides. Without all of you, your love and support and love for the Carroll family, John would not be where he is today. I love you all, he loves you all, and without further ado, it's my pleasure to induct John Carroll in this year's Chase Collegiate Hall of Fame. Our next coach, our next honoree is Coach Bernie Sheffield Sr. Bernie was with us from 1977 to the year 2000 when suddenly, sadly, he passed away. So many memories of Bernie, and I'd like to bring up John Salvatore, class of 1989, and fellow inductee. Please come forward. Okay. 
Hi everyone. Earl, you mentioned you were going to give a big speech and I just had to give a little color, but yeah. yeah. Set me up. Okay. Right. So, thank you for that. So, well, uh, I can't believe two years ago we were here with our first class. And uh, as Danny said, thank you so much, Carol, for taking the lead to create such a, uh, a beautiful memory of everything that's been happening here on this, this campus and, and in this school. It's, uh, it's really a really beautiful thing that we've done here, so thank you for that. Congratulations to all this year's inductees and their families, uh, something that's well-deserved. and There's so many others that are well-deserving of it as well, and I look forward to the many years of, of seeing the inductions and, and seeing this flourish over the years. I was really humbled when Carol asked me to come out and speak and say a few words about this year's inductee, Bernie. Also, a good friend of mine, Tom Hart and Steve Tatigen, uh, were also asked to come out and, and give a few words as well. Steve's in Colorado uh, and couldn't make it, but he shared some thoughts and I'll share that in a little bit. And Tom, unfortunately, is uh, preparing for, no, unfortunately, he's working with some family needs right now and uh, helping out with his father and, and preparing for a triathlon. So uh, he sent a few thoughts as well, and I'll share that in a little bit. Bernie Sheffo was much more than a wrestling coach. He was a hardworking businessman, a trustworthy friend to many. He was a faithful husband to Joyce and a loving father to Danny, Michelle, and Bernie Jr. And also, and most importantly, an amazing grandfather. To me and to so many other wrestlers over his 22 years, he was our coach. Great and horrible coaches are memorable to anyone who enjoys athletics. And I'm sure all of us have had some of both. Bernie was great in so many ways. When speaking to some alum that wrestled underneath him, many words did come and surfaced often. Sticky, committed, present, honest, tough, real, and unconventional. Besides those words, uh, he really believed in each and every one of us. He taught us that we could beat and defeat anybody, and that's what he really instilled with us. I can tell you, no matter how big, how many muscles, that athlete that we were about to wrestle had, he would look us in the face, slap us in the face, and tell us, you're gonna beat that cupcake. He's nothing more than a pansy. <laughs> Bernie took a bunch of spoiled, entitled boys and turned us into winners, honorable men. Steve and Tom both sent uh, some messages and I wanna share a little bit about what Tim, uh, with Tom and Steve shared. Steve wrote, And he, did, and he, he wished he could have come today to induct him as well. So he sends his stories that he couldn't be here. But he wrote, Coach was the largest male figure in my life besides my father. I miss him and think of him often. I can still hear his voice in my head. He's a great man, and I miss him dearly. Tommy Hart. Bernie was more than a coach to us. He was our friend, and he believed in our ability to win. I'm sure it's the case today and often entering the competitions as the underdogs, but Bernie always looked past that, and he believed in each and one of us individually, and he knew we could win. He brought out the best of each one of us, and as a result, a little school like ours were fierce competitors in the wrestling world. The best part of Bernie's path to our success was he loved every single minute being with us, and you could feel it. His style was far from traditional. I'll give you a couple of examples. Diving off the Universal Gym like Superfly Jimmy Snuka was encouraged. <laughs> a loving whack in the face. And a quote from Sly St Stallone, this movie, was a standard pre-match prep talk to all of us. And a laugh out loud and enjoyment in that small little wrestling room that we called home. 
was the best part of being with Bernie. He truly was an amazing guy. He led us to victories that no one thought was possible, and he made us all feel like champions. I'm forever grateful to have had Bernie in my life. Thank you to all for coming here. And, uh, and I promised myself I won't cry any. The Salvatore's, as you know, has a history of crying on this porch. So if you know my brother, he gave a commencement speech and barely finished it. So uh, I promised not to do it, but as I was writing this and I was preparing this, I, I had trouble finishing it. But, uh, but uh, I want to thank you all for coming. And this is a well-deserved honor for a truly remarkable man who's no longer with us on this earth, but he's looking down on all of us from above. I sincerely want to thank the Sheffield family for sharing Bernie with all of us. Thank you. Accepting Bernie's award is his son, Bernie Jr. Thinking of Bernie, actually today is his birthday. I wanted to share a couple of memories on Bernie. Um, he always came into Ray in my office every day. And I don't know how he did it back then, but they used to wrestle in what we now have as our weight room, which was a very small area. Their meets, they would roll the mats out in the glass field house, but I don't know how he did it every day with a group of guys in there wrestling till 5, 5.30 at night. It was amazing. And uh, when I first started my job here, um, another memory, Ber Bernie would come in and he, there was either one or two points in the year where he'd say, oh, I'm going to a game dinner tonight. Do you want to come? And I was like, uh, no. And he knew how it got to me. I said, you eat that stuff? And he said, yeah. He goes, it's great. You got to come. You got to come. So every time a game dinner came around, he'd be at my door asking me to go. Sadly, I couldn't make it that night. But a great man who we still talk about today. And this is a little weird now because our next speaker is going to speak for me. I'm going to bring up Ray Bear. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll send that to you. Yeah. Very good. I won't tell any stories about Bernie because I. I'll tell you one. Just one. I never forgot it because I was this. Uh, 33, I think it was, right? maybe 32, can't remember. Standing near my door, and this, uh, Bernie was a big man. And his voice was, uh, uh, he'd hit you with it. He says, hey, who are you? <laughs> I says, who am I? He said, who are you? <laughs> I'm from Waterbury, so I wasn't, I wasn't nervous. <laughs> he says, I'm Bernie Sheffo. I said, oh, God, I heard so much about you. Paraphrasing a little bit. He says, uh, you know anything about wrestling? I said, yeah. Actually, I had it in college. That don't mean nothing. Do you really know about wrestling? I said, I don't know. Well, the real thing you mean? What? He says, I want you in that room today, in that little baby room that we have. I want you to sit on that universal machine, and I want you to take it all in. I said, take what all in? The sweat. The smell, everything that goes in with wrestling. And if you can do that, then you know wrestling. And though it was hard, believe me, I made it through. But from that moment on, that man and I became the greatest of friends. One other story. 
My son-in-law's father, who was Bernie's, one of his best friends and Yankee diehards, uh, I went up to Bernie's place because he was also on my insurance. Man. He said, I got a present for you, a jacket. I thinking of Bernie, I said, oh, it's going to be a j Yankee jacket. Nope. What kind of man he was? What kind of jacket do you think he, he bought me, guys? A Red Sox jacket that I still have today. So that's the kind of man he was. And one other one. I don't smoke and I don't drink. And that's, that's pure fact. But Bernie always, always invite, invited me to come with him to smoke those cigars and eat the food. And I said, I don't even know what it is. So, but I would try the food, I didn't take the cigarette, but I would go with him to many places and even to a lot of meats, because that's how much I love him. Okay, moving on to another person I love. If it was up to the kids, we would have been married about 30 years ago. I said, oh, Coach Bear, that's your wife? No. You share a Coach Bear, you're always together. Carol Deming is being honored as the new member of the Coaching Hall of Fame at Chase Collegiate School. Carol has taught grades pre-K to 12, coached numerous sports, such as varsity tennis, volleyball, soccer, taking the team to the New England Championships in 1992, and softball, leading the softball program to six New England Championships and numerous league championships. In addition, Carol has coached soccer, basketball and softball on the middle school level with many successful and undefeated seasons. For the past 39 years, Carol has mentored thousands and thousands of children, including my three children, at this school community. In 1992, a Waterbury boy now, walking up Thor's Chase, first day, and I said, oh my God, I opened the glass field house door, really nervous. However, when I opened the door, I saw a young lady walk over to me. And she was young, I won't tell you her age, but she was very young. And with that smile, which you just saw, and that soft voice, I felt welcome. I knew from that very moment that she would be an instrumental part of my life for years to come. I said a speech about her last night, so I'm do, do, doing some dittos. <laughs> Sorry. Carol personifies to those around her a feeling of comfort. And that's a key word for me. I need to feel comforted. My son, who will be the athletic director next year, re, uh, replacing the great one in Logan, he says to me the other day, he says, you know what? When Carol Deming walks into the facility, she makes me feel comforted that everything will be okay. She's kind beyond, beyond kind. Oh, God. Has tremendous integrity, empathy, compassion, and joyfulness. Carol is confident, passionate, and has great faith in herself and those around her. She's a great communicator and listener. And I'm not being facetious when I say that. I love Mary Poppins, right? We all love the Mary Poppins story. She's almost perfect in so many ways. To me and many others, Carol is the finest coach that our school community has ever had. She personifies in everyday life and on the athletic field and court, the pyramid of success. Carol has had a love of sports since she could hold a glove, basketball, and field hockey stick. As an athlete at Lyman Hall High School, she competed in varsity softball, basketball, and hockey. She was selected as captain for all three teams and MVP for all three sports in her senior year. Carol was named a 1974 Outstanding Athlete, and in 1995, Carol was honored by being inducted into Lyman Hall Hall of Fame. Carol's athletic career continued at Southern Connecticut State University playing softball. She was an assistant coach at Lyman Hall before accepting the position 
at St. Mark's McTurnan in 1980. In 2006, he was honored by being inducted into the Connecticut Collegiate, Collegiate and High School Hall of Fame and has received numerous awards by various associations. We will miss her roaming the sidelines. However, I'm firmly confident that she will stay involved in the school community for years to come, as her love for the school is immeasurable. To her family, thank you for sharing a part of her, even though she is a truly, truly die-hard Yankee fan. <laughs> the Deming families are number one. In fact, her nephews at this were born with the names of Mickey and Thurman. What a family of Yankee fans. As, as Scale Sears says, and I'm sorry that I'm, I'm diddling it, but Brian's song is my favorite movie ever. And when, you know, you get, you're getting older and you're about to cry and you learn how to cry at movies, I bawled at this. As Gail Sears said in the movie, Brian's song, I love Brian Piccolo, who was a great football star. Well, I love Carol Deming. And that's it. Thank you so very much. And thank you. that I'm not going to make her close her own program. <laughs> um, but I want to thank our honorees this year for coming. Your work and time here at Chase is testimony to um, a lot to yourselves and to the folks who made you who you were, who you are. I'd like to thank our speakers as well for giving the little vignettes that they did about uh, what has gone on at this great school for the last couple of decades. Uh, thank you as an audience very much for attending. Uh, we have refreshments out but that we hope you will enjoy and enjoy your company as well. And we'll see you back here in two years at our next ceremony. Thank you.